Hello and welcome. So glad to have you back here. It's another episode of The Nonprofit Show, but it's not just another episode. It's a special one. So glad to have Michael Buckley with us today with the Kilo Group. Hello from the Kilo Group. Um, here for The Nonprofit Show on a thought leadership episode. So Michael's going to share with you about how you can leverage your board members at your events. And Julia, you had oh. shared this in almost, you know, four years, 750 plus episodes. We have not had a dedicated conversation around this, Michael. So we are so honored to have you here and to impart your, your wisdom with us. So hello also to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. She had this wonderful idea to create this platform. She thought it was going to stick around for two weeks. And again, well, well beyond that, but so glad uh, that we have this platform for conversation, and I'm honored to be able to serve alongside you, Julia. I'm Jarrett Ransom, her personal nonprofit nerd. I can be yours too, CEO of the Raven Group, and honored, uh, honestly, to have this, you know, opportunity. Thank you to our amazing presenting sponsors. I want to give a shout out of gratitude to our besties over at Bloomering American Nonprofit Academy. Fundraising Academy at the National University, Staffing Boutique, your part-time controller, nonprofit nerd, again, the nonprofit thought leader. These companies help us help you, and they're here for your mission. I like to remind you that their mission, it's really your mission. So they want to help you do more good in, around, and throughout your community. So do them a favor, do us a favor, do yourself a favor, check them out. Uh, they're great people and, and great companies. So Hey, if you missed any of our episodes or you want to take this one with Michael to share around to your uh, board members, hint, hint, hint you can hint. find it on <laughs> Roku, YouTube, Vimeo, Fire TV. And for those of you that are podcast listeners, queue us up wherever you stream your podcast. You can find the nonprofit show there as well. So Michael, so excited to, to have you here um, in the green room chatter before we started talking. I had mentioned how it's almost our year anniversary of meeting. Uh, you and I connected at the Association of Fundraising Professionals Conference in Las Vegas, and it's coming up soon in New Orleans. And I understand that I'll see you there. I will be there. I can't wait. <laughs> awesome. Well, hey, so excited to have you back. Again, for our viewers and our listeners, Michael Buckley serves as the managing partner, fundraising team lead at the Kilo Group. And uh, we have his website address here as well. It's the Kilo Group. That's spelled K-I-L-L-O-E group.com. Check him out on um, so many great information. But if you would, Michael, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your company. Well, thanks. And obviously, thanks for the opportunity to be here and to connect on a topic that I really love uh, love talking about. But I'm a career uh, professional fundraiser, and uh, I recently can officially say that I've been professionally fundraising longer than I haven't been. So I don't know if that's good um, or I bad. I think that's fantastic. Um, but I started at... <laughs> I started at four, so that uh, that really <laughs> helps that number. Uh, but I spent about 20 years as a professional practitioner in higher ed and, and in the animal welfare space, and then branched into doing some consulting work, which much uh, to, uh, to the comment about this show lasting two weeks, I thought the consulting thing would be uh, a little interim thing while I figured out what my next uh, path was. But fortunately, it's just really grown. So part of the team at the Colo Group, a nonprofit consulting firm, really helping organizations grow from good to great. And that involves everything from strategic planning to feasibility studies and capital campaigns and really just getting your um, fundraising house in order. Order. So we're um, we are, are are passionate and we're fortunate that we've uh, uh, have clients across the country and now uh, even into Canada. So we're really excited about uh, partnering with organizations up there. But I think it all comes back to the basics of fundraising. I think some of what we're going to talk about today really speaks to that. You know, it's so interesting. We put so much pressure on the board to do certain things. Um, you know, one of those first and foremost is that fundraising component. However that looks, it looks different for so many different organizations. But one of the things that we are seeing, and we were talking about this in the green room chatter, man, we're all back in the saddle when it comes to the rubber chicken dinner circuit. And, you know, now that COVID is, is you know, moving in a different direction, 
we're seeing these events come up. Some of them are the exact same as they always were. Some are different, but one of the things that's not different is that we do have our boards and we have our board members not necessarily knowing or being deployed. Maybe that's the right word, being deployed. And you've come up with a really interesting process or methodology called the quick method. And we're gonna go through it, but talk to us about what the, the ecosystem of this and how did you come up with this? So I think most, uh, like most good ideas, like come out of a place of frustration <laughs> and seeing, you know, both as a practitioner and that as a consultant, seeing board members at special events and them talking about how much fun they're having or how much, mm -hmm. how much fun we as the staff and consultants must be having. And I think anyone who's planned more than one special event in their life knows they're really not as much fun for the staff as they are for anybody else or for the attendees. So for me, it sort of came out of a place of what job can I actually give board members to get them involved? And I, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the details later, but I have a job description I'm happy to share with anybody who, who reaches out and we'll get to you guys to share with your um, viewers as well that gives very specific expectations about what people should be doing at these special events. And the thing is, not all your board members are gonna do this. And, and I think it's really important to point out that that's okay. You know, you've got board members on your board who are really good at finance. You've got board members on your board who are really good at governance. But for those people who are good at connecting uh, and interacting with people at special events, you've got to give them a job and tell them what they're going to do and hold them accountable for that. I love that. So we're going to dive into this quick method. And for those of you listening, it's Q-U-I-C-C-K, um, and you're going to learn more about that here. So Michael, take us through the first one. We have here qualify. What does that mean? Yeah, so I think there are five things, as, as you said, that every board member should do, and not necessarily in the order we're going to present them. The reason why it works that way is because it makes a cute little word, and, <laughs> and that helps. Um, but I think board members should be responsible for qualifying some people in attendance. And, and there's a lot of back work that should go into this. We should be talking about who's coming to the event. Why are they there? And this is really the director of development or executive director or some staff person's responsibility to, to figure it out. But every board member should be able to quali should have two qualification questions ready in their arsenal when they connect with people. And it doesn't have to be crazy and in depth and, and really well thought out. I mean, think about some of the most basic qualification questions of why did you come today? You know, why are you at this event? What do you, you know, what do you love about our mission? How, what's your connection to this mission? So just getting your board members to have two or three qualification questions in the back of their pocket, ready to go and to connect um, with people at the event when they're asked, excuse me, I should say connect with specific people at the event. So when they're going around and finding Julia or finding their folks that they're assigned to, as you're in a conversation, being able to have some two good qualification questions to keep that conversation going. You know, I love that. And I bet that when you go through this quick um, concept, a lot of board members will be, be like, wow, I never thought of that. And you know, it's not, what I love about this, Michael, is that it's not just for an event, it's how a board member should be. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's really organic and it's natural. It's not stressful. Um, talk to us about your next point on the quick method, and that is to inform. What does that look like? So I think that is to to your point about you know regardless of the special event or or not, board every board member should be able to inform. I think you want, uh, or as part of this method, we want board members to have two or three outcomes based pieces of information about the organization that are true to its mission and that have some quantitative item to it. So a lot of times in animal welfare, we talk about, you know, number of adoptions, you know, did you know last year our, our organization adopted out, you know, 2000 mm -hmm. um, companion animals? 
make it specific so that you can engage in that conversation. I think really, as I said in the opening, so much of this, for me at least, came out of a point of frustration when board members were saying to me, well, I didn't know what to say. Okay, now you know exactly what to say. And not only is it factual and outcomes-based and true to our mission and all those really exciting, nerdy things, Jared, that we talk about in the nonprofit space, but they are designed to elicit a conversation so that people don't feel like they're just walking over and saying, did you know we adopted out 2000 animals and then running away from the conversation? So this is more than just the the rephrasing of the elevator speech or or mission line. This is really more of a data point. It's a data point. And the, the thing about it the, the the method that we use is to make sure that it's a data point that resonates with the person who has this job. So if you're the board special event ambassador and you are really passionate about this particular program, make sure that person can speak to that program. It's okay. I think so often board members and even staff get overwhelmed by, well, I don't know everything about the organization. Spoiler alert, Nobody knows everything about the organization. (laughs) So be able to speak to things that you're passionate about, but make sure they're outcomes based so you're bringing attendees, right? At the end of the day, you want attendees to become closer to your organization and continue that relationship. What better way to do it than in person with a knowledgeable board member? Yeah. You know, Michael, and and so what if we don't know all the answers? That gives us another opportunity to talk to that person, have a follow-up conversation. Um, that's a win-win to me. Absolutely. And I think too, like I am not a finance person, but in every time, every experience where somebody has said to me, Oh, well, tell you know, tell me about your, I don't know. Again, I know nothing about finance, but tell me something about blank, you know, having to do with your finances. When you engage your finance committee chair, your board treasurer, or even your CFO, they're speaking each other's language and they're already connecting. While me, you know, I don't, I don't know what PL stands for. <laughs> yeah, I we don't, don't want to talk about PL and gaps <laughs> no. and, and all of no, this. Like, no, 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 hey, no. I am that. curious, Michael. <laughs> um, would you recommend that we nonprofit leader, you know, talk to the board members in advance of every single event? Or is this like a broad stroke annually? Or should we have a little gathering prior? No, I think it's a it's a specific effort right before a major special event. So don't, you know, don't waste people's time with doing this every, you know, every minor small event. But this is more for galas or big things that you know board members are going to come to. And again, it's not for every board member. You'll have some board members who don't want to do this. And if they don't want to do it, you don't want them to do it. But give them a job description, give them clear expectations, and then give them the tools to actually do it and to perform well. You know, I heard you call them, uh, you know, the special event board ambassador. And I could even see, you know, often at these conferences that we'll we'll probably see soon, you know, ribbons that identify them so they do stand out for those board members that are extremely comfortable and serving in that ambassador role. So I, I just think this is fantastic and yeah, very tangible, you know, it makes it, it makes it easier, I think, for the board members to know their responsibility at the event. Okay. So take us to uh, the, the first C we have here, which is cultivate of the quick method. What does cultivate mean? So just like qualify, it's just part of the, the, you know, the, the prospect management a system we all use, having some qualification questions in your back pocket, but also having some cultivation questions in your back pocket. You know, asking people, uh, my favorite cultivation question is, if money was no object, what would you want our organization to do? Having one or two of those in the back of your pocket that you can help bring that conversation. Because, you know, at the end of all this, there is some follow-up. So we're going to ask our board uh, special event ambassadors to report out to you as the development person or the executive director and find out some things. Again, the idea here is to get your uh, your attendees at events to become closer to your organization. Imagine how impactful and frankly awesome it would be if you asked somebody that question and they said, you know, I, I 
I'd love to build a new building and gee, I have the money to do it. And of course, it's not going to be that simple, but you're getting information, you're gathering information. So having some cultivation questions in the back of your pocket that are specific to your organization and specific to your um, your own interests that you can ask and actually be intelligently, um, you know, conversive with, I think is very important. So we're having folks qualify, we're um, having folks inform and also have some folks uh, cultivate. You know, this is great. And again, I am just, um, I'm just drawn to the concept of the parallel that this is what our board members should be doing all the time. Yep. You know, get somebody, away from the bar. Get away yeah, from get, the bar. <laughs> away from the bar. Or go to the bar first and then do this. But mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can certainly do this in line yeah. as, as well. Okay, take us to connect. That's our next one of this quick method. Um, again, for those of you listening, Q U I C C K method. Um, so connect is the second C. Talk talk to us about this one, Michael. So let's identify who at the event we need to connect other people with. Okay. So I think when you're in a, in a room with three, four, 500 people, mm -hmm. there are people that you want to connect to, you know, you want a potential board member who may be there or a community leader to meet your board chair, your executive director. So who is that little network that you are responsible for connecting? Uh, so every board member should have all these things in their in their back pocket, but also understand if you happen to meet Jared, you really want Jared to meet Julia. So how can you make that happen? Do you know who these people are? Who can help you do that? The other, you know, not to overcomplicate the conversation, but there are, as I've said, some board members who just really won't want to go into this much detail, but maybe there are some board members who can just simply connect people, you know, who can play a little bit of a matchmaker during, uh, during an event, but think about connect in the way of who do you want to connect at the event and who do you specifically, because again, you're going to have a list of people that you're responsible for engaging with. Who do you want that person to be connected with in the room? Love this. I love this. I'm curious, you've served on many a boards, my friend. How like how easy would this quick method have helped you during, you know, during that time? Or or was this something that was presented to you? You know, it's really interesting. I, I've been thinking about more about the events that I've chaired. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I've always been stunned at how revolutionary of a concept this was, was just getting the board members to be early in the pre-function space and to stand at the exit and thank the, the visitors as they were leaving. And sure. so, which is horrifyingly basic, every single event, this should be a protocol. I mean, it should be natural. And to have that, um, you know, brought forward, you know, I, I can remember chairing a very, very large event, thousand guests and said to the board, now this is what I'm gonna to expect to do. And I had two board members that were like, yeah, I, I won't do that. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? We're, we're trying to raise a million dollars in a night and by God, you need to be there. I mean, it was just like, it, it, it's such a disconnect between what needs to go on. And I, I don't know, Michael, about to your point, do they just feel like this is a party and the hard work, you know, it doesn't I, impact them? I mean, I think that is some of it, but I also want to give the benefit of the doubt to, to some folks. And we've all had wonderful, phenomenal board members and we've all had not. Um, so I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to all of them and just think that they truly don't know what to do. And I, and I think about, and this is a funny, um, perhaps analogy, but, you know, when I got married and planned a help plan, well, I didn't really do much work in fairness, but when I was involved in a, in a special event of which I was 50% of the attendee, um, you know, I even remember my now wife saying, okay, after salad, we're going to get up and we're going to thank that table. And then we got to do this and we got to do that. And it was like, I was at my own wedding. It was basically given an itinerary. Yeah, and, yeah. but, and, and, you know, there's a whole joke to be made in New Orleans over that, but 
you know, if you think about it, I didn't know. I I'd never been to a wedding before that I was in and I didn't know that you get up and do all that. And then there's right. a, you know, and, and luckily I had, you know, not only my wonderful wife, but also a great wedding planner who was, you know, tapping me on the shoulder and telling me where to go. So let's give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they don't know what they really can do, but it's really important for board members to understand this is part of a bigger play, right? You know, this yeah. is not, we're just not doing special events because they're fun because they're not, <laughs> but this is part of a bigger energy and effort to bring people closer to the organization. This is just one of the many steps along the path, but this is an opportunity that, that cannot be missed. We, When you've got people in the room and you're talking about how awesome your relationship is, there is the time to engage them, not two weeks later via letter. That's right. right. I, you know, I love it. I love it too. And I could see this going forward and maybe this is all part of the quick method. I do know that we have, uh, you know, one more to address and then, and then a little surprise to share as well. Um, but I could see this and, and maybe you coach on this, Michael, where it's like, you know, a, a document that's sent to the board member that has the table of the people you want them to connect. I'm taking it even further. Maybe it's like a little headshot so that they know how to visually identify the person. Um, I could just see this as, you know, again, that playbook and how it plays such a critical role in the entire ecosystem of relationship building. Yeah. And let me give you a little tip that I've used, um, which the more and more I talk about my secret little tip, the uh, less and less of a secret it's going to be, but you've got to do name, you've got to do name tags. Everybody yeah. has to have a name tag. They're annoying. You run the risk of spelling somebody's name wrong, but you have to do them. And Think about, I've always done color-coded stars on the name tag. So if you've got multicolors on your name tag, you're you're great, you're wonderful, but you're not special enough. And then think about um, the same color stars or stickers or something to a uh, connected to a particular board member. So if I've got all blue stars and Jared is blue and I'm not Jared and I'm walking around, I'm, I know as a board member or a staff member that I need to connect Jared with anybody who has four blue stars on their wow. name tag. So there's a little bit of an inside, you know, inside baseball trick you can use to connect those people, especially at huge major events. But this is not, you know, this is not something board members are going to walk in at, to the special event. And Julia, to your point, probably not on time, let alone early and hand them a piece of information. This is, you know, this oh. is, there's a lot of prep into this. You've got to make the energy and effort and I promise you will pay off. I love that secret tip and you're right. It's not so secret with our international <laughs> audience. Yeah, now, Michael. Right. <laughs> yeah, everyone's buying blue colored stars and putting them on name tags. It's cool. That's right. That's, what, That's right. Okay, drive us home uh, with the final uh, tip of this method. Again, the quick method and we have think. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's some of the most important part. I mean, regard, I mean, I always say, I think as a board member, the least you can do is say thank you to people. Mm -hmm. But at this event, if you've got, you know, your portfolio, and let's use language with like that with our board members, I and mean, we put portfolios yeah. together for our professional fundraisers, let's make sure board members understand it's, it's, you've got a portfolio of people for this event make sure that these folks are being thanked and not just in a very general, oh, thanks for coming or thanks for your support kind of way. But, you know, as a board member, Julia, I, I was recently informed, you know, you and your family made a million dollar commitment to this organization. I just wanted to say thank you for that gift. It yeah. does this. It is so impactful, so on and so forth. So make sure it's specific. And again, the, the idea here is getting people closer and better connected to the organization. You've got to put some strategy and intentionality into that. I love this. I, and I, I, I love that you did um, kind of not just say be gracious and thank people, but to really drill it down and to be intentional about what that thank uh, thankfulness is. Because I find, and I'm really interested to hear the two of you comment on this, I find that a lot of times there's a reticence to be specific about somebody's gift. That it seems seems like, oh, well, we don't talk about the money or we don't we don't say thank you for your fifty thousand dollar gift or thank you for your generous you know, endowment piece. I mean, Jared, what do you think about that? You know, I can't help <laughs> but think, Julia, that it's all about like trusting our data, right? And having our development fundraising team really say like, 
I know wholeheartedly this is the amount. <laughs> okay. I've seen too many tax receipts go out that have been incorrect that I really feel that it it comes down to the accuracy of our data. Now, if it's a singular gift, but it's a, if it's, you know, a cumulative kind of a, of a amount, I okay. think that makes it trickier. But what are you seeing in that, Michael? Yeah, no, that that um, that just caused my PTSD to flare up a little bit <laughs> inaccurate gift receipts. But no, I think, yeah, don't do cumulative, don't guess, don't do any of that. But I think it is, you know, we. I was actually at an event not too long ago and somebody said to me, you know, said to us, because it was actually my, my wife's undergraduate alma mater, that we became a member of their president's circle, which is a thousand dollars. So we're not talking big money here, but somebody said to us at the event, thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for your first year or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, they took the time to figure out who we are, what we did, right. you know, and, and they're seeing the future. I mean, this is not, you know, these gifts are just big, people are not giving you their last gift and then showing up at your special event. They want to see what your organization is really all about. So don't miss the opportunity to be intentional. Absolutely make sure it's accurate information. Um, but there, I think we also, Julia, to your point, I think folks are have been led to believe that you almost have to be a little humble and people don't want acknowledgement. Maybe people don't want public acknowledgement, and I understand that. But I think people want, you know, the the to know that the board chair or the chair of the development committee knows that they've made an impactful gift. So absolutely. thank early and often. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you on that. And I think that um, it's also to me, Michael, symptomatic of all of these things. And that's the trajectory of being prepared mm -hmm. and having these discussions. I loved that you have a job description that you you put forth and you can share that with your with your board and really talk this through people might forget they might have never thought of this it might you know help them to spurn on what it is why they're there and how they can perform i think it's brilliant another thing that's super brilliant is that um the Kilo group has actually a blog post about this very topic on their website you can go to the group.com k-i-l-l-o-e group.com the kilo group.com and you can read all about this and dare i say i think this is one of those tools that you need to be sharing with your board forwarding it on yes this and today's conversation because it adds so much more to it and for those of you that have um you know joined us in the very beginning i mentioned the surprise and this is it so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to wait a few hours, right? It, it's here, this recommended blog. This has been such a lovely, inspiring and like, you know, palatable conversation because I feel like it really, again, brings those tangible tools to the table for our board members to serve in that, you know, advocacy way as that ambassador. So Michael, from one nerd to another, thank you, my friend. My pleasure. I'll see you in Las Vegas, or excuse me, New Orleans. And uh, if anybody wants to together, wants to get together and talk in greater detail, I certainly would love to do it. And so Michael is not just saying for a fun-filled weekend. He's specifically talking about <laughs> the AFP Icon um, event, which the nonprofit show will actually be there broadcasting um, from the Bloomerang booth, which will be a lot of fun. So definitely we'll be talking more about that um, as the, the time moves forward. Michael Buckley, Managing Partner, Fundraising Team Lead at the Kilo Group. Thank you so much. I love your energy. I love your very practical knowledge and and um, process that, as, as Jared said, we can do this. We need to be doing this, but you remind us how um, how easy it is we can be doing it. Hey, again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Been joined today by the nonprofit nerd herself, Jarrett Ransom, CEO of The Raven Group. Again, we get to have these amazing conversations because of the generous support from our partners at Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Nerd, and Nonprofit Thought Leader. These are the folks that bring it home for us and with us every day. Michael, I really, really, 
feel like a, a light bulb went off. Um, and more than anything, the ability not to be so frustrated to, cause it's, it's for me, it's been like, why aren't these people getting this? <laughs> But you brought it home in a different way. And so thank you for that. That would, what a tremendous lesson today. My pleasure. It was great to be here. The half hour goes so quickly. I could do this um, all day. <laughs> oh, good. Well, we hope you will. We hope you'll come back on as well. So I will be here. Good. Awesome. Thank well, you for everyone that joined us live or perhaps the recording. Again, this will be available on all of our streaming platforms. As we remind everyone every day, we invite you, ask you, encourage you to please stay well so you can do well. Thanks again, Michael. We'll see everybody else tomorrow.